Welcome back, friends, to another episode of Learn With Us, where we take video content that's worth your time, and we learn from it. With you. With you. I'm Eli. And I'm Mitch, I think. He forgot his name. And today, we're learning from... Terrence McKenna. If you've never heard of him, you're in for a wacky time. Yes. It's not even a ride. It's a wacky time. <laughs> He's, uh pretty much known as an expert in the field of psychedelics and is also big into math and such things so he's really similar ish to alan watts in some ways where he's a conglomeration of a lot of different philosophies Mm -hmm. but then taken through the mind of a mathematician who's tripping Oh, Jesus. <laughs> so the thoughts get strange. Sometimes he says some things that are over the moon, but mm-hmm. always fun to listen to. We'll call him out on those. And has a lot of interesting stuff weaved into everything, for yes. sure. I've only watched one video on him, so I'm pumped to see what happens in this one. This video is called, When Culture Fails. What does that mean? Now, as recently as 1910 or so... Uh... Rudolf Otto, who was a great um, philosopher of religious experience, he defined God as the holy and totally other. Well, to somebody raised on tabloid newspapers in 50s science fiction, the holy, totally other sounds much more like invaders from the rim than anything associated uh, with the Judeo-Christian tradition. Somehow in the same way that we have Disney-fied the elves, we've actually Disney-fied God too. And, and so the, you know, the old-fashioned phrase, God-fearing, it has a very uh, anachronistic ring. We modern people don't fear God. We deconstruct God. We may seek God as spiritual counselor and friend if we're you know, God-positive people. If we're God-negative people, we deny the very phenomenon. But very, f- but if you spoke of being God-fearing, some people I think would think you must be Amish or Mennonite or something. It's such an old-fashioned emotion. Uh, the alien that comes through uh, the psychedelic experience is terrifying in its alienness, in and of itself. It isn't that it does anything terrifying or that it promises a threat. It's simply that its existence inspires an awe which mutates into terror. If you have a culture that tells you to be something other than what you are, Mm. then if you have a transcendent experience and you witness yourself Mm. you wouldn't even recognize your truest self and you would think that it's an other yeah and yeah and and then the idea of god being the absolute other or like this idea of god fearing Mm -hmm. uh is interesting too because another great teacher that we listen to often Sadhguru, yeah talks about the fact that we separated creator from creation Mm. that like we are created by this god so why why do we like if you have a child with someone Mm. you that that thing is cherished as if it is you you know Mm -hmm. but then for some reason now that we are one you know that a creator created us Whatever the creator is, if it's just nature, if it's a, a guy in the sky or a lady in the sky or a lady in the earth, who, who knows? We don't. <laughs> but whatever it is, we are offspring of that thing. Mm-hmm. And rather than in these situations when we're like seeing that type of thing more clearly or feeling that type of thing more clearly, rather than uh, going into this... Uh, you know, fear state, we are now learning about these experiences more and going into a state of, like, maybe this thing that I'm fearing is really the, the ultimate 
thing that I am mm. and almost being afraid of your maximum potential. Right. Because when right, you find right. yourself in those types of situations, you are exposed to what you could be without these cultural boundaries on you. Mm. And it's like almost scary when you witness your own power. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. I've noticed I may be susceptible to this, but it does get described in the psychological dictionaries of pathology. But I'm susceptible, and I always have been, to, uh, I suppose you would call it a form of hysteria, but it's fear in wilderness places. And... Uh, if you have this, you know exactly what I mean. If you don't have it, you, it just seems like some kind of pathological weirdness. But it happens when you are alone in wilderness. In other words, when there is nobody there expressing cultural values. Uh, there's, it's, a, it's a recognized phenomenon of the human condition. Uh, there's, a, there's an anthropology book about a tribe in New in Sumatra, the Tambunan. And the subtitle of the book is uh, something like The Felt Presence of the Other in the Extra Community Context. And it talks about how another name for it is Wendigo Psychosis. The Wendigo, this is more spectacular form. This is something that happens in the north woods of Canada where people who are out in these extreme wildernesses become convinced that they're being stalked by this animal, which is a supernatural animal, the Wendigo. And the Indians know this thing, and they fear it. It's sort of like the Sachamama idea in the Amazon. It's an enormous beast that is so is more feared by the people than anything making it onto the Discovery Channel. You know, they can handle anacondas, they can handle jaguars, but the Wendigo and the Sachimama are beyond, you know, the hunter's skill, the shaman's power. It's something uh, overwhelming. Again, he's got so many different things going on. It feels when he like speaks. Here's what I came to. Most people, when they're having a conversation or a monologue, they go in a straight line. Yeah. And it feels like if you imagine the point that Terrence McKenna started with this, it's like you're expanding on all realms. <laughs> yeah. And I keep I keep trying to figure out where he's going mm. with this. And it, he, he'll just be like, <laughs> it's just like, no, <laughs> no. I'm like, Wait, you, I, did you finish that point, or is that <laughs> this a continuation? That's what I think, because I think what's interesting is when he's talking about this, uh, the Wendigo, or that mm -hmm. idea, um, this, like, fear once you are away from everything you know. Yes, that was really interesting. Like, it's, it's also interesting, the idea of it being this, like, big spirit, or big presence, or, like, beast, that, uh... You know, like, all of these things have this, like, physical image now tied to it. But I think more what a lot of these things are that come from myth and folklore mm -hmm. are descriptions of feelings yeah. put into yeah. a image so that we can remember it. Mm -hmm. And it makes me think about the ways in which, uh, you know, when when things start to drop away, maybe, like... A thing that you identify yourself with greatly like say there's a group of friends or something like that mm. and you start to realize that that part of you is no longer like feeling very satisfied and you need to drop that thing that you're doing mm. whatever it is like you have the thing that keeps you there say the thing is like smoking weed or something that's that's one thing i went through is like having groups of friends that I would really be connected with yeah, through weed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then as as I realized that it really wasn't, like, making me feel how I wanted to feel, uh -huh. I, I understood that I needed to move away from that, but it was like this, every time I would start to move away, there would be this fear of, like, what am I going to be? Mm. And I don't know, that that's what the Wendigo made me think about, was that, that idea of, like... 
losing culture and having to face yourself mm. or face whatever the next thing is. Yeah, yeah. What that made me think of is the when he was saying you're alone in nature. And I feel like there's no way that Terrence McKenna actually views it as you're actually alone. Because, of course, if there's not humans around, you still mm. have a lot of things around. But I think the fear is that you live your life in these cultures and you do these certain things, these tasks that make you feel accepted and connected in the culture. And then you get into a situation, he's talking about nature. It could be any situation where that doesn't work and you're just lost. Like if you mm. go out into nature and the ways that you would find connection with your human friends, you can't find that in the mm. natural world and you're not feeling that connection. So you feel like you're alone and you feel like you have no idea how to deal with that. Mm. That's where that made me, my mind. Yeah. Go. Yeah. And also with the alien thing, it makes me think about how much uh, the other makes you feel like you have uh, a group, mm, you know, mm -hmm. like yeah. the, the way that you bond with other people is through this experience of an, another thing mm -hmm. and having that wall between your people and those people yes. or those things. And it's like, yeah, then when you start thinking on humanity level, you start thinking about what is the other, the other being like, extraterrestrial type thing because mm. you you're like how can we bond as a whole people do you think that with the dissolving of tribalism which we know that we came from do we think that we're trying to find this human we, we have this tribe that is now the whole world in this mm. connected world and we need to find an other and that's why we're so enthralled and interested with alien life is because we feel like we need this to be our, we're trying to identify with this new massive tribe. So there has to be other tribes that we are, you know, could be in contact with. Yeah. It makes me think that, uh, I feel like this is the point where there could be a leap in what we are able to be. Cause right now, you see this tribalism mm -hmm. coming out in horrible ways all yes, over the earth. For like sure. these conflicts, like racial conflicts in America are like yeah, the first thing yeah. I think about where it's like people are just gripping to this idea of like, these are my people, those are other, mm -hmm. and my people need to survive. And it's like, nah, there's enough food for everyone. If yeah. We learn how to just intercommunicate. Absolutely. But uh, it almost it almost brings me to this point of like, the only way that we're ever going to have peace on earth and, mm -hmm. and become something uh, greater than this like chaotic place that we're in right now yes. is transcending the idea of self and other. Mm. And like, can, can we move to a place where it is no longer about plant life versus human life? Yeah. Yeah. It is no longer about black and white, you know, it's like, mm we move to a place of understanding that the air I breathe is the same system that has the trees, same system that has the animals. Mm -hmm. And it's like, we are all in this constant, it's almost like looking at the earth as a being. Yes. And, and moving more towards that type of a thing as being like, right. How we could overcome. We have cells all over our body that help us live. And if we're just the cells, then mm. what, like, that should be our role is just nice. helping this larger organism live, you know? If live your life as if you're a cell on earth. And not the center point of the universe. And, and like, I think the other interesting thing is that we often think that that would not be a happy life, like would not be fulfilling. Mm to be mm -hmm. a cell you're like what the hell no the cells work for me i work for myself but then you start to i mean there are studies on happiness that show like there was this study where uh, people were given like the same amount of money and mm -hmm. one person had to spend it on themselves and the other people had to give it away and the people who gave it away mm -hmm. had lasting happiness yep. over the other people it's just yeah. And it's like, if your life is dedicated to this bigger thing, you are always going to feel purposeful and you are going to be thankful for this bigger thing. Mm -hmm. 
and yeah, every day becomes a gift then rather than a, what can I receive? Mm. You know, the the aliens of popular culture, the greys, the slant-eyed, uh, all this zoo of things that haunt the tabloids, are very different from the the DMT creatures, who are much more similar to the Earth-centered um, supernatural beings like. Fairies, elves, gnomes, nixies, sprites, afrites, jinn. You know, we have these ideas of like wizards and witches and magic. Yes. And all these things that nowadays anyone who speaks about, like I'm, I'm in some classes where we're talking about race and stuff like that. And an example that people use in deconstructing, like if race even exists, because we're talking about philosophy of race. Yeah. Is they'll be like, they'll compare it to uh, other things that are completely made up and uh, mention, like for that race stuff, I'd need to go into a whole thing, which would be an interesting video to talk about. Yeah. But uh, they'll, com yeah, they'll compare it to like um, magic or, or witches or whatever and always use this example of magic as something that's so clearly not real mm. that it's just not even worth thinking about with this like way that we view the world that must be annoying for you i get so <laughs> frustrated because like if you think about what magic is you know mm. it like by definition it's the ability to change something with uh without needing to touch it or with like this a supernatural mm. connection and we can literally speak words like say things and completely alter somebody else's body chemistry mm. by making them like if, if you evoke a feeling in someone you have altered their body chemistry without touching them you can literally poison someone mm. by saying mean things to them because cortisol and those things we know will lower your life expectancy or you can do the opposite with kind words because we know the chemicals that are released in you when you're happy lead to a longer life. That's that's freaking magic. Like that is magic. It's it's magic and we all like and the the west has somehow the west which then you you look at like the beginning of germanic tribes and stuff like that and it's all based in this folklore yeah. of like magic. Yes. And I feel like those things were just people experiencing life rather than dissecting life. Oh. Because if you're like, if someone can tell you something and you immediately feel differently, like what if a wizard or a witch or a shaman were people who were just so good with the way that they spoke and the way that they energetically engaged with you that they could shift, seemingly just shift things and like shift crowds wow. and do stuff like have that. Control over their own energy. And, yeah, and be able to like and interact with nature interact. Yeah. because because nature is working on a similar thing. Like snake charmers. Oh my! Are gosh. literally able to not get bit by snakes because their body chemistry is in a way that the snake knows that you are chill with the snake being there. So it feels Dude. okay with you being there. I mean, how many how many times do you see a situation with animals where the animal will freak out by this one person? Like a dog walk in the room would be freaked mm. out by one person. And they're like, oh, it's just like they know it when you are afraid. It's like, well, why do we just skip over that all the time? Like that's yeah. insane <laughs> yeah. that animals can do that. And why can't we do that? Like we could. We can. We definitely we do can. it all the time. But then we say mm. that we just like put it into this box of psychology and science. Yeah, yeah. Rather than experience yeah. and actually living it. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> it's, this is a tangent city right now. Whoa. <laughs> it's like Terrence McKenna. Like, I, I've totally forgotten all the things that he said. Yeah. But it's like he just inspired all of this thought in <laughs> yeah, us. Yeah. It's magic. It's magic. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the, one of the fallacies that haunts clear thinking is the, is the fallacy of the mundane. There really is no mundane. I mean, when you start deconstructing things, everything uh, be, it turns out mystery stands behind the simplest phenomena. 
the simplest act, uh, its casuistry reaches back eons of time, its implications spread out through the universe, and, you know, who is witness to all of this? Simply the unaided human mind trying to struggle forth, forward toward um, a model of itself and a model of the world that it's embedded in. And culture, even the culture of science or the culture of mathematics, uh, where it pretends to build firm ground, there is in fact really only uh, quicksand, or at the very best, the kind of bridges that occur in, in uh, Sir Gawain and the Green Knight and the Knights of the Round Table, the kind of bridge that you can ride uh, a horse across before the bridge burns and tumbles into the abyss, but that's all you can move across. I mean, we're constantly living like that, you know. Think how... Whoa, how would that visual of wow. everything you learn builds a bridge that you move across and then it burns behind you? Yeah. And then you're like no longer... That's so interesting because think about how much information not only is like good for you and moves you forward, but also taints you in a way and leaves you from your past self. Like a kid, oh. like a kid who doesn't know that a person can murder or rape is not afraid of people in that way. But then they discover that thing and it moves them across a bridge to like, now I can be safe from that thing in a lot of ways but also you've lost that innocence and that certain way of maybe looking at every person as just a person, something that you shouldn't be afraid of wow. at all. And we're just constantly moving. And then it's, it's yeah, I loved how he said like, that humanity is just trying to make a model of itself. Yeah. Like to understand itself. It's like, what? Oh my gosh. That makes me think of this song that I've been obsessed with lately. It's by Cat Stevens. It's one of my favorite artists. Mm. It's called Sitting. And the lyrics are all centered around, oh, I'm on my way. I know I am somewhere not so far from here. And he, he it's like you can picture this journey. But then, of course, the song is called Sitting, which is interesting. Oh. And it's this journey. And again, not somewhere not so far from here. And the whole song crescendos and he's like he he starts going in and he's like yelling like oh i'm on my way i know i am and then the end of the song is like and then you're just gonna wind up where you started from oh so that's what this all made me think <laughs> this is what this all made me think it was like if you actually went on this full arc of like you're learning all these things you're getting tainted then you're like oh wow i'm tainted this sucks like i don't really like this then you like then you start to become awakened and then you're just like, somehow this enlightenment journey, I feel like is just leading you back to that mm. childlike innocence of yeah. just wonder of the world. How much of exploration is stripping the assumptions you've made now? Yeah. And then that can tell you that all the things that you're exploring is not this other place again. It's just right in front of you. And that, that seems to me why the... The key to that, like, bridge, bridge burns situation, mm. how to escape that, yeah. that you're always just on a certain island, uh -huh. is your identity. Because, like, you have the these bridge burn things, and then, sure, you could go around in the world and be like, now I want to not be afraid of people, and eventually, like, get back to that childlike thing. Yeah. But you want to still have all of those islands that you visited because they are helpful. Mm, mm -hmm. So it's like, how do you, how do you look at the world with that knowledge? Yeah. But without that, that filter clouding things. That's a huge question. Yeah. And then if you look at people like Saiguru or Muji mm -hmm. or Muji, yeah. these enlightened beings uh -huh. like Pema seemingly all these different yeah. people, it seems like they are now identified with something other than the person who's walked all those bridges. Oh. Like that those things they know are there and use mm. them every day as helpful things. Yeah. 
but they are uh, almost like a zoomed out view of all of that is like what they are actually identified with. Mm. So then they can no longer, they can look at something as brand new wow. every yeah. single day uh-huh. without, but also have that, that knowledge of those other things to use whenever they need it. Mm. Mm-hmm. And you're not tainted by that knowledge in a way. Mm-hmm. Cause it's like sometimes difficult for me to, be trying to seek this greater life awareness, but also be aware of all the terrible things happening on the planet. And, and that like, I feel like whenever that weighs me down, that keeps me from this, but Mm. then being ignorant to that while I'm on this path feels very wrong. Mm. So I feel like that's the balance that I'm trying to find is being aware of all that, bringing that with me and like, okay, we're going together. Yeah. Almost. But not, yeah, you're right, like with a bit of And that's distance. why I feel like it's that identity that's key. Yes. It's like, what are you? Are you the thing on the island? Or mm. are you thing, the thing that is able to acknowledge the islands but not reside there? And recognize that you're the ocean. Yeah, 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 I could, I could get behind that. <laughs> No, I, or, I, or the particles that make all of it up. Yeah, I, so. I heard that somewhere. The like people think that they're the islands, but they were actually the ocean. Oh, that's some weird stuff. That's some out there that's stuff that you just stuff. got. But, but I mean, if you're here, learn with us. And if you're here for Terrence McKenna, yeah. you're here for out there stuff. <laughs> yeah, this we brought out our out there stuff today. Yeah. Those are here. You go, Terrence McKenna. <laughs> this is our card. All right. Yeah. So if you have any thoughts on a lot of those things that were said. Yeah, there was a lot said. Yeah, we'd love to hear about it. And uh, comment, like, subscribe. Do it all. And as always, much much love. love.